Ladies and gentlemen, the first game for the Chicago Bulls is actually less than a week away for preseason, but the media day for the Bulls are continuing. This is day five of the media day. We've got two players that have once again made some interviews for the Chicago Bulls and it's interesting to see the future for these two players and what roles they'll be playing for the Chicago Bulls. We got a little bit of a flash in the past with some Jim Boylan references and we've also got some very interesting things to say about some of our players once again. So without further ado, let's talk about the media day for the Chicago Bulls day five in this video. Let's do it. What's up everybody, it's the Aiden Sports Show and welcome back to another video. Today we've got a Chicago Bulls video in relation to the media day for day five. Interviews all around. Every day there's brand new interviews for the Chicago Bulls fans to watch and enjoy and hopefully to see these players end up backing up some of the things that they say. Ultimately, the Chicago Bulls preseason is less than a week away. We'll be seeing our team play finally. Finally, we'll be seeing our team play in, it's been nine months or so, so hopefully we can end up having a good showing in preseason and of course the regular season. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below. Overall, what do you guys think about the interviews that came out today? How do you feel about the way that one of our players was talking about Jim Boylan? And ultimately, are you excited to see these two step up for the Chicago Bulls if they can? Now, obviously, if you don't know who I'm talking about, day five of the Bulls meeting day involved Thaddeus Young and Daniel Gafford. Now these two had some interviews uh, that kind of got people a little bit interested and I'm not saying that in the way of I'm excited to see them play this season. Of course, Daniel Gafford's a very exciting player. Of course, I'm very excited to see him. I think Thaddeus Young needs to step up and needs to have a much better role on this team than he did previously. But the things that they've said, it was kind of like there was a little bit of drama going on. And I'll talk about that in relation to Daniel Gafford a little bit later. But um, first off, let's talk about Thaddeus Young. With Thaddeus Young, uh, he talked about the difficulties of how the schedule is, of course, being on the road for majority of our games, which is a big under understatement. We have mo most of our games on the road. It's, not even, it's way more than half. Um, and of course, the traveling is something that's a big issue. But again, when it comes to that, we're probably going to have a lot of our home games in the second half of the season. And I think the second half of the season, if we can manage to have a good start to this season, beat some teams that we probably shouldn't beat, and obviously beat the teams that we should be, if we end up having a decent start towards the start of the season, then the end of the season should be able to treat us kindly if we can get manage to get ourselves in a playoff position. So... Of course, the start of the season, everyone's going to be excited. I feel like it's probably the best time to have away games, to be honest, considering everybody's a bit rusty. Everybody um, might not be at the same level as we are, or maybe we're not on the same level as other people. But again, away games, in my opinion, is always better to have at the start of the year, to be honest. In my personal opinion, especially when there's no fans in the arena, um, it should... It's just the way that I see it personally. Now, he also talked about the new regime. He's, look, Thaddeus Young is a veteran. Thaddeus Young has been in the league for many, many years, probably more than I've been watching basketball. That's how many leagues he's been in. That's how many years he's been in this league. And I trust in the things that he says. And he's, he said that there's a completely different vibe with this front office than the new than the old regime with Jim Boylan and obviously Gar, Gar, Gar Pax. So... Thaddeus Young saying that is obviously a big um, thing to me because I trust in what Thaddeus Young says because he's been around the league more than any other player on this team by far. So when he says that this front office is different, when the front office is better, when things feel a little bit different, when when this, when this he says things like Artorias and Mark Eversley loves to hang around the team, bring again, bringing that relationship factor to a whole other level. All these things were very, very good, in my opinion, for Thaddeus Shan to come out and say. All of these things a lot of people already knew, but once people say it, once Thaddeus Young says it, once someone with credibility in this team, because he is a veteran, when he comes out and says stuff like that, considering he's been in so many other teams, so many other front offices, he's not a spring chicken. He's been around for quite some time. Uh, it's, it makes it a lot more believable, and it also makes it a lot more exciting to see 
how this relationship with the front office and the players, how Arturius and Mark Eversley and Billy Donovan will build the relationships around the team. And obviously when you build relationships, when you have the um, personal relationships and you have the bonding experiences with everybody around the team, they're going to want to play more for each other than ever before. So it's a very, very smart thing that Thaddeus Young said. I'm very excited that he said it. And obviously I believe in everything that he says because once again, he is a veteran. And that was the main gist of Thaddeus Young, to be honest. He was talking about getting his mind right. He was talking about how coming into training camp, he's trying to get everybody on the right page, trying to get something out of training camp, always coming into training camp fit, especially on this long time off. You need to come into this training camp fit because nine months is a long time to not play basketball. If you come into the training camp fit, you're already streets ahead of above most players in this league. So very, very interesting things that he said. And once again, massive, massive praise to Patrick Williams. He talked about how he had the biggest hands he's ever seen in his life, which is, um, again, he's been linked to Kawhi Leonard as a, as a player to look up to. So uh, I guess having the claw type of hands kind of makes sense there. But in the end, uh, he's given massive praise. He's told him, he said that he's been great so far, that he's been learning, willing to learn. He's coming in every day and he's working. And that's the things that Patrick Williams himself has come out and said that he wants to come in and work, work for his position, work for his place, work for belonging on this team and all these things. And that is perfect. And Thaddeus Young is backing him up by saying that's exactly what he's doing. And I want to see more Patrick Williams. I can't wait. This is why the preseason is so important. I want to see what Patrick Williams is about. I want to see my expectations of him. I want to see if he is going to develop into this amazing two-way player or maybe he's going to have a slow start. But again, it doesn't matter how good or bad he performs. That's not what I'm concerned about. I am just I just want to see him play. I just want to see him get some game time. Again, all rookies are going to have a very tough season this year. I'm not expecting a world beat a season out of Patrick Williams. I'm, I'm just so excited to see him play and finally get some experience. And if he can play well, that's an icing on the cake for me. I'm very, very excited to see him play at Daddy Young has made it even more. And same with uh, Daniel Gafford. Now, Daniel Gafford was next in the press conference. And of course, the first thing that was asked about Daniel Gafford was the Jim Boylan situation. If you guys don't know what happened, Daniel Gafford was streaming at the time and he was talking about Jim Boylan, basically said he needs to improve as a coach and also as a man. Um, Daniel Gafford came out and said, basically, it's instructive criticism. He didn't mean anything bad by it. He didn't mean to cause any harm. He didn't mean to bash Jim Boylan. But in his perspective, Perspective, he was just giving constructive criticism, giving some feedback. And honestly, I will trust him with that. Now, maybe at the time, that was something that was just misunderstood. But he's come out and he's cleared the air. And at the at the moment, I'm not bothered about Jim Boylan. So I, I don't know why they ask questions about it. Of course, they're trying to get some articles out of it. They're trying to get some news out of it. And that's fine. But for me, Jim Boylan is not a concern. I'm not concerned about the past. I want to see the future. Um, the, Jim Boylan is the past. I hope he gets a, a job somewhere else, assistant or otherwise, because I think no man should just lose their job. But that, that's that's just how it is sometimes. This is how it is. That's This is the cutthroat business. This is ruthlessness that the Bulls have shown with Jim Boylan. So as much as uh, I wish that he gets a job somewhere else in the league, at the moment, he is not my main priority on this team. My main priority is Daniel Gafford and the Bulls. My main priority is the future of this team. Is Billy Donovan? Is Mark Eversley? Is Arturis Canavios? All these play, all these um, people within the front office and the players. Don't, that's my concern. So if he's going to come out and say it's constructive criticism to give uh, Jim Boylan saying what he said about Jim Boylan, then fine. It's, it, it, it is what it is. That's what he wanted to do and that's what he did. I have no issues. I think with Daniel Gafford, it's more important that he speaks honestly because that's the type of person I feel that he is. He's a person that's very outspoken. He's a person that's not going to, um, I want to say care about your feelings, but he's not going to be a person that shies away from saying the harsh, harsh things. He has that type of attitude, man. He has that attitude where... It doesn't matter if I hurt you. If you, if I need to say it to you, I'm going to say it because that could benefit me and the team. That's just the vibe I get towards Daniel Gafford. It's more of the 
I'm going to do what needs to be done. If I have to say something to get you in your mind straight, if I have to if I have to criticize you, if I have to say some things to you to get you to be better, then that's what I'm going to do. That's what that's the type of feeling that I see towards Daniel Gafford. And maybe I'm wrong on that, but I feel like I am right. And I think he even said it himself. It's a it's constructive criticism. And we leave it at that. He also talked about getting his mind right and his body right. He talked about how he's an introvert. Um, as I'm kind of one myself, so that that kind of uh, gave a little bit interesting to know that he's one too. He likes to stay at home with his pets. This was more of an outside of an NBA related uh, press conference in a way, more talking about what he was doing outside of the of the court rather than in it. He talked about his life, what he life his life won't really change from the protocols and the virus because he stays at home a lot anyway, and yeah, all these things that. Uh, all these things outside of the court but on the court stuff he talked a lot about how he's trying to prepare his body right he knows the things that he needs to do now in training camp and pre-season to get him right he's taking very good care of his body he actually looks a lot stronger in my opinion i mean just by looking at him he looks really really like muscular it looks like he he bulked up this year and that he said something he's been trying to gain weight um, gain weight and muscle as much as possible and that's a good thing of course it's a good thing as a center as well you need to be a brute force and especially a center like Daniel Gafford that's very athletic that can drive to the ring that can catch alley-oops and that can post people up I think he's a person that needs to bulk up a little bit and he has done that very very well it looks like at least from what I've seen and of course he talked about Kobe White once again uh, Kobe White, he talked about how vocal he is, which is something that even Larry Markkinen said that Kobe White just won't shut up, which I thought it was funny. But anyway, Daniel Gaffer talked about the vocal part of his game and how he's he's slowly getting into that position to be the primary ball handler once again, to be that player, to step into that role and, and do that role well. So those are the things that Daniel Gaffer talked about. And that is the end of this Chicago Bulls video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Now again, this one was a bit interesting, but it was a lot of non-basketball related stuff in this interview. So I feel like hopefully in the next day, whoever they're interviewing tomorrow, they can get better interviews out of them, talk about more on, on the court stuff, what they've been working on instead of what do you guys do at home. I mean, those interviews are fine and all, but especially when you're coming towards a season and you're really excited and you're hoping to see your team perform well and you're looking forward to them on the court. Uh, as good as knowing that Daniel Gafford likes to spend his time sitting at home playing video games, I want to see what he's focusing on on the court a little bit more. So hopefully there'll be more questions directed towards that. That's my constructive criticism to the questions. Again, if anybody does this, see this video from the media, maybe um, try to keep it more on the court related. But at the end of the day, uh, they are experts at what they do, so they will do what they do. I do what I do, and we move on. The next day, the media camp uh, will be tomorrow. And of course, there should be a video for tomorrow's media camp as well. And again, the preseason is really, really close. So my plan is to do game reviews for the Chicago Bulls as often as I can. Now, I should, I will make a separate video trying to give information on how this will work, but... I will just say that I'm trying. I'm going to try and do some game reviews for the Chicago Bulls, like player of the game, standout player, most important player, weakest link, stuff like that. And ultimately, I want to um, I want to do, do this on a regular basis. But again, I'll make a video about that later. But these are just some ideas I'm throwing out to you guys that are watching this video and have stuck to the end. You guys know what my future goals are for this Bulls channel. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Have a wonderful and safe day. I'll see you for the media camp tomorrow. Preseason's coming less than a week away. We will see what this team is all about very, very soon. Have a wonderful day. Take care. And peace.